Okay, for this video, we're going to show you how to do molecular strings, right? How do you represent a molecule with strings? And how do you do fingerprints based off of them? And we're going to do that using the RDKIT, RDKit library, okay? So uh, RDKit, I don't know who developed it, unfortunately, in this one, but it is open source Kim Informatics software. And this tutorial comes to me from Olez Izayev at Carnegie Mellon. So special thanks, Olez. Thank you for making this one possible because um, this is outside my I'm not an organics guy. So I appreciate his help in uh, pointing me towards this tutorial that he put together. And we're going to walk through it together and see how this can be used to be a feature uh, representation tool for organic molecules primarily. Okay, just like before in the last example, since this is a work tutorial, you can find this on the GitHub under the worked examples folder. And if you go to the RDKIT tutorial, this is the stuff that Ola sent us. So again, special thanks to him. Um, this is an IPython notebook, and it does have a couple special dependencies. So I actually made a special environment for RDKIT that I'm going to go ahead and open up. Okay. So here we are. Um, we've got it fired up in Jupyter Notebook. And again, it's not my tutorial, so bear with me as we kind of go through this. But RDKIT can do lots of things. Um, it uses smiles. It can turn things into SDF. That's a type of data format uh, for storing data. Okay. They start out with an explanation of what smiles is. It's a very simple way to reflect a molecule because it's just a string of letters. So you have your atoms and your chemicals that get represented by the chemical symbol with a capital letter. They often ignore hydrogen. Um, you have your bonds. Uh, single bonds don't get displayed. Double bonds, you use an equal symbol. Triple bonds use the pound signal. Quadruple get the dollar sign symbol. It says atoms that are bonded must stand nearby. Ring structures are written by breaking each ring at an arbitrary point, although some choices will lead to more legible smiles than others. To make a straight non-ring structure as if it wasn't a ring. Uh, and adding numerical ring closure labels to show how rings connect back together, right? That's kind of the idea behind it. Um, aromas 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 aromacity is commonly illustrated by writing the constituents B, C, N, O, P, S uh, atoms in lowercase forms, uh, respectively. And for side chains, representation of atomic group branches are used. So again, I'm not an expert in this. It's been around for a long time. It has now been updated by several different models, but it is still widely used. The benefits, again, is that it is easy to write. It's easy to store because a whole molecule is just a string of letters, which is not going to be very big. But the downside, um, it doesn't have 3D information. And uh, one molecule can have multiple smiles. I mentioned this in our last video that it uh, that's just a downside to it, which I think has been fixed with selfies. Okay, So you do need to have the RD kit uh, library. So you need to in, in, install that. I think I did a conda install for that. It's easy to, to work with. From that, we're going to grab the following things. We're going to, well, first we're going to get pandas. And then from RD kit, we're going to get chem, pandas tools, and data structs. Okay, so it's going to grab those. Uh, first thing that he does in this data set is he grabs the data set, right? So he says data, panda read CSV, the full data set. Uh, we can take a look at that if you'd like. The data set itself in this CSV uh, folder is, I don't know, a few thousand or a few hundred long. And it has a bunch of smile strings representing molecules. And then it has some sort of target properties associated with them. And in this case, I don't remember if that was glassy transition temperature or something else. But it could be anything, right? It could be any label that we want to do our machine learning on later. Um, but what was important was the molecule, right? So, yeah, whatever these things are, they've got some additional columns of information. But here's the smile strings. You see for a bunch of different molecules, they've written out the smile strings. Okay? So he goes ahead and reads that in. Now you've got it, and then he takes a look at the head, so the first five entries, and you can see that, yeah, it's got a smile string. It's got these other columns, okay? So then he does my one smile string. He grabs an individual one of those by just grabbing the first one in the list, one in the zeroth position, he grabs it. So he's going to grab just one of those from the smiles STD column. So he's grabbing just this text right there. That's what he's grabbing. And then he says, print it out. And sure enough, there it is. Well, what can you do with that string? Um, this library has some cool stuff. Like, check this out. You can do my one mole object. Mole object is a type of object in this uh, library that they've created, right? Uh, by doing chem dot mole from smiles, right? We have the smile string, but we want the mole. So there's a function, there's a method here that is mole from smiles. We need to send it that one smile and then sanitize equals true. And I don't know what that is. I assume it's something to help um, in case there's a problem in the smile string or something like that. But let's go ahead and run it. And it's created the object now, this mole object. When we ask it, it'll tell us what type of object it is. It is an rdkit.chem.rdchem.mole object. That is what it is, a specific one made in this library. And then you can actually plot these things out, right? It went from that smile string, and now it's showing you this crystal structure. That's one of the things this library can do. That's fantastic. 
That's really, really great. You could store it in this tiny little string of text, and yet it knows that that's the molecule that it corresponds to. Uh, that's really great. Okay, and then you can do chem dot mole to smiles, and you can send it that mole object and turn it back into smiles. Right. So here we go. We turned it back into smiles, which is what it came from. You can see whether it if if it changed at all. It looks the same to me. I don't think it changed at all. So. If there was a sanitization step, it doesn't look like it had to change anything for this one. Okay, Then it can do this one, chem.mole to inchy key. What does that stand for? It's like international chemistry key or something like that. It is a, it's an ASCII text, right? It's a bunch of ASCII that is a specific, uh, think of it like a barcode for every molecule. Every single chemical or molecule out there has its own uh, international key associated with it. And so this has a conversion tool to actually pull that out. And sure enough, here it is. It's whatever that is. That's the the key, the international key for this molecule if they didn't want to use strings notation, okay? Um, it tells you the number of atoms. It says, you know, from that my one mole object, it has a method that says get number of atoms, right? That method returns 21, that there's 21 atoms in that thing. So pretty slick. And now we can start to uh, create our first fingerprints. So fingerprints are a way of vectorizing, right? Creating a feature vector. In this case, it's a two-dimensional one. It's a 2D array of information which represents this molecule. Maybe it's, uh, I think in this case, it actually shows their uh, positions, the X, Y, Z positions of these things of the different atoms, right? I think is what, what they show. I'm not very familiar with this, so forgive me on that one, all right? Um, from rdkit.chem, you can import all chem. So my one mole object 3D equals chem dot add H's, right? So it's gonna add the hydrogens, right? So you're gonna send it that mole object. You're gonna add the H's because remember, by default, it just leaves those off because it's usually easier to see the structure without them. So great, we will add the H's. Now we show it, there they are. All of the H's are now accounted for that were missing from this structure before, right? You can see it's the same structure. They've added the H's. They had to, they had to make it a little bigger in spots so you could see it, but it's the same structure, the same connectivity anyways, okay? Um, and then you could do, uh, again, here's showing that, that fingerprint again, right? This is the fingerprint. This is showing the X, Y, Z positions of all these things. Um, did it, have, it didn't have the H's before, but now that we've added the H's and we ask it to do it, look, they've included the H's now and their X, Y, Z positions, okay? And you can read more about those. Uh, there's some good wiki articles on these different um, tables, right? This one, for example, I took from this Wikipedia on, on what these representations actually are, okay? Um, you can write this to an SDF file. It's a way of storing information. It's a data file, essentially. So they do... Uh, it's inside the chem module. They do SD writer. They write this object with this specific name. So now you've stored all that information in some sort of file. If you want it on your computer to pull it up later, they write it and then they close that file when they're done. There is something here that only works for Linux, Linux so we're going to skip that. Um, then they've got some information on how to work on this with pandas because remember this had some pandas tools. So we're going to do data small equals data.head 40 copy. So it's just going to grab the first 40 entries of that big old spreadsheet that we had, which had however many entries. We're just going to grab the first 40 is what this is doing. <clears throat> so let's take a look at it. Here they are. It's the first five of 40 now. Then. Okay. From rdkit.chem module, we're going to import pandas tools. Okay. Pandas tools dot add molecule column to frame data small. So we're going to send it this small data, the 40, and we want the smiles column to be the smiles data and the RO mole to be in the mole column, right? So this is going to create a pandas data frame with those things in it. So now let's take a look at it. When we look at this data frame, this is what we see. You see that it had the smiles column. It had uh, this stuff from before, actually, plus this RO mole. It has this molecule next to it. So this is really slick. We went from having a comma separated value sheet, which had just a string and who knows what that molecule is, to now in pandas, in, inside Python, we can actually see this with the molecule right next to it for the first five. How slick is that? Very, very cool tool to work uh, inside of pandas, right, with this, okay? Um, and it says important to know, RO mole is not a column with pictures. It's column with mole objects that gets represented as pictures. So it's not like, yeah, these aren't like JPEGs getting put in there. It's still the mole object. It just creates that image when we do this, when we have it show it, okay? Um, and of course you could do that manually, right? That same sort of thing could happen manually, but why not use the tool that they built for you? It's easier. Okay. Okay. And it says, why do we need to do it manual way? Some mole objects in memory could be hard. So sometimes it's useful to perform the calculations of interest on the fly. Fair enough. Um, you can do calculations, right? So this is calculating N atoms, the number of atoms 
without storing the mole object. So they're going to say in the data small in the number of atoms column, we're going to make a new column in that data frame. It's going to be equal to data small. We're going to send it the smile string. And then we're going to do this lambda function where we actually get the number of atoms from the mole object in real time. So sort of list comprehension there, that lambda function, we're pulling it in real time to calculate the number of atoms. And now when we show it, um, yeah, I didn't see it at first because it's clear over here at the end, but the number of atoms has now been appended. We have a new column for number of atoms. Great. So that worked. Um, and then drawing a mole grid has another function here. So from rdkit.chem, we can import draw. And then you have draw moles to grid image. We're going to send it this data small data frame uh, dot ro mole, the column with the, the ro moles, right? And it's going to be able to draw these things. So we tell it to do that. And sure enough, it creates a grid of all these different molecules in our set. Pretty rad, pretty powerful. Um, Okay, then we come down to using uh, molecular fingerprints, right? So right now, all we've done is we've shown you uh, smile, a string representations with smiles and how to go from that string to actual things that look like objects, right? But we haven't actually done any fingerprints. How do you actually say that, is this the best way to represent the molecule? Because you can just give it the smile string and that's a start, but it's maybe not the best way because the whole smile string, that doesn't take into account what things are like near neighbors, which are probably the ones that are going to be mattering, right? Near neighbor interactions. And so you can do that with fingerprints, right? And there's a bunch of different types of fingerprints. There's the RD kit fingerprint. It says this is a daylight like fingerprint based on hashing molecular subgraphs. There's atom pairs, topological torsions, max keys, Morgan circular, 2D pharmacore, on and on. There's all these different types of, if you remember from our composition based feature vector, we had Magpie, we had Jarvis, we had. Uh, Anton Olenix. There's these different ways. This is like the same thing. There's different ways of generating fingerprints, and it, it tells you a little bit about uh, some notes about them, but you could read more to learn a bit more if you wanted. In any case, um, we're going to say my this mole object equals data small r mole in the zero position and in the one position. So that's going to store uh, into the same object twice. They're going to store the zeroth value and then the one value, I guess. So it has one uh, mole object stored into it. Okay. Then it says this fingerprint, right, is the object now we're creating, is going to be chem.rdk fingerprint, where we're going to send it that mole object, max path 7, fingerprint size 512. So I'm not familiar with how fingerprints work in great detail, but I know that it starts with an atom in the structure. If we go back up to our molecules, it picks one of these points, and it says, if I sort of expand a ring around one of those points, sort of like we saw with the graph networks, what sort of things are present there? And so I imagine that the path size is telling you how large of a ring to look around it. But again, I'm not very familiar with it. Um, but you could look into the documentation and see what these arguments are that you need to pass to it and how that would change things. But this is going to create a fingerprint. And that fingerprint is what we would then be able to use for machine learning. Uh, so here we actually see it. It's saying this fingerprint. And it says, yes, it created a fingerprint. Um, and then you say, well, turn it into a string. And there enough, check it out. There is our vector. We now have a big old long vector, which is However many characters that is, I don't know if that's the 512, probably that's probably 512 since that's the size we asked for. We created now a unique custom vector, which has zeros and ones, which represents that molecule. That's a custom fingerprint, right? That we could use for machine learning. Pretty slick, right? Check it out. They take that same thing. They turn it into a NumPy array. So you can see it just a little more cleanly, right? Um, Oh yeah, sure enough, here we go. The path length variable that I told you, zero, one, two, the three, right? As you pick a position and you start to move further out, it's essentially saying how many steps can you take away from that when you consider what things are nearby a given atom, okay? So that's that's your what your path length is doing, okay? Um, here's the Morgan fingerprint. So this is a slightly different one. This is the Morgan fingerprint. We're gonna get Morgan fingerprint using this mole object. We're gonna send it an argument of two. I don't know what that is. I assume it also has to do with path length, but yeah, circular radius two as opposed to zero or one or something. I imagine that's what that has to do with. Um, so some of this, obviously, you don't want to have to, you need to go to the documentation and see what their specific arguments are. But how great that you've got a library like this that allows you to generate these representations, right? These fingerprints, uh, which could be useful for making predictions. Okay, and then they, uh, let's see, get Morgan fingerprint as bit vector, right? And you can see it as bits. So it's turning it into zeros and ones again data structures, dice similarity, this fingerprint and this fingerprint, um, those are the same, right? This fingerprint is the same because right? they're just comparing two things. So the similarity should be one, right? And then they see dice similarity, this fingerprint and that fingerprint. Did they, def I don't remember defining as that fingerprint. They must have, let's go back and see where that was. 
this fingerprint. Ah, and that fingerprint. Oh, yeah. So it was slightly... What was the difference? Oh, these were two different numbers. I see. I thought those were the same thing. Okay, good. They did they did store them in a slightly different thing. So those are two different mole objects. They stole into this object and that object. They compare them now. And from the uh, first fingerprint tool that they used, when we look at the comparison, uh, they're very similar, right? Those two vectors are very, very close to one another. 98 uh, as opposed to 0.98 as opposed to 1. So they're quite similar, right? But now let's compare this fingerprint and the Morgan fingerprint and see how similar they are. Not, not close at all. So it is a unique representation. These different uh, fingerprint techniques are unique. They're different, right? And maybe some are better than others, just like Matt Tavek and Jarvis and Olianik. Some are better or worse for different applications. You can imagine trying out a bunch of these different representations to figure out which ones are better and which ones are worse, okay? It says, what does the bit mean? From rdkit.kim import draw, we have our mole. We create a mole by sending it a string. Um, they create a dictionary by fingerprint. All Kim get Morgan fingerprints as bit vector. We're going to send it that mole radius to bit info by number of bits 512. Um, let's see. Let's just run this. Okay, then it says Morgan fingerprint SVG. It actually shows you uh, in SVG, so support ve uh, uh, vector graphics, right? What these things are. RDK SVG. Molecular similarity. This is slick. Remember when they did that dice similarity where it's showing the overlap? This is a way of sort of representing that overlap in a graphic to show how similar these things are, what things they have in union, right? Which ones are in the same set as opposed to not in the same set. Um, so pretty slick stuff. I'm going to probably stop here because it's outside of the stuff I understand about this. And I think we've gotten the point that this is another powerful tool for forming representations where the hard work's already been done for you because there's libraries like this RD kit, right? Which makes your life really easy. And once you've got this array back up here, once you've got your array, this is now the input to your machine learning model, right? For this individual one. And you'd have to do this for all the ones in your training set. Um, but now we have a tool to do that. And that's the important bit here. So we will jump back to our next video, which is going to be on actually starting to construct some models with all of this. We're going to talk about linear versus nonlinear models and then get into metrics after that. Okay, stay tuned.